Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. This is Dr. Shazira. In this video, we are going to be discussing fixed point iteration method. Normally, for any root finding problem, you are basically given the function fx. Okay, fx equal to zero. So in the fixed point iteration method, okay, you need to construct x equals g of x. Okay, so it means that from the equation fx equal to zero, you must apply or do a little bit of algebraic manipulation so that you can have x on the left hand side. Okay, and whatever term that left, okay, you put everything on the right hand side. Okay, so the expression at the right hand side is a function g. Okay, what we call a function g. So from fx equal to zero, uh, you need to construct on your own, basically. Okay, x equals gx. Alright, so for example, if we take a function um, fx equal to 0, so assume that your fx is x squared minus 2x minus 1 equal to 0. Okay, so if we take out x squared to be on the left hand side then you have 2x plus 1 okay so therefore if you want to take if you want to have x only x at the left hand side so it means at the right hand side you will have 2x plus 1 power of 1 over 2 or the square root of 2x plus 1 okay so now you already have expression in the form of x equals gx but you also can see there are a few other ways to construct your gx, okay? In the sense that okay, we could have x squared minus 2x to be at the, uh, at the left hand side, okay, in the first place. So at the right hand side, you will have 1. And then if we factor out x, then we have, uh, in the bracket here, we have x minus 2 at the right hand side equals 1. So therefore, if you want, if you want to isolate x at the left hand side, then the rest would be 1 over x minus 2 at the right hand side. This is also, you know, x equals dx. And what else? Okay, so see, okay, in the third form, we could have you know, 2x equals, at the right hand side, you have x squared minus 1. So therefore, x equals 1 over 2 x squared minus 1. Okay, so this is another x equals gx. So in fact, yeah, you can manipulate you know, your expression so that um, x become on the left hand side yeah, and everything and the rest would be on the right hand, uh, the right hand side. Okay, um, so the question now is, which of the form of gx here that need to be used in the fixed point iteration method? Okay, so this is your gx, this is also gx, and this is also the gx. Okay, so in the fixed point, in the fixed point iteration method, okay, the gx that you must, that you need to choose must comply to this criteria. So g prime of x must be greater or equals to negative 1 but must be less or equals 1. This is what we call the convergence criteria. Okay, or we also can um, Memorize in the form of this. Okay, if we take the absolute value of g prime, so at the left hand side, okay, negative one will be positive one. Okay, so everything will be on the right here, less or equals one. Okay, so um, for this kind of uh, problem here, this equation here, so you can choose form one, you can choose form two, you can choose form three. Okay, as long as okay, your gx okay, satisfies this convergence criteria. So it means that you need to check for the derivative. Okay, you need to find the derivative of gx. Okay, that will be your g prime. And at a certain value of x, okay, you evaluate your g prime and see whether that value 
it is in the interval of negative 1 to 1. Okay, if it is in the interval, then you say that your x is suitable to be used in the fixed point iteration method. If it is out of the interval, then you discard that gx. Okay, so it means that, you know, uh, if, your, if your gx okay, do not satisfy this convergence criteria, so it means you will have a divergence situation. Okay, so if you still proceed, okay, you will not converge to the solution. Okay, so it is important for you, you know, after you have constructed your x equals gx, okay, so it is important to check for the convergence criteria. Okay, because you do not want to waste your time okay, just to find out at the end, you know, you have a divergent situation. Alright, so when you are okay with that, then the um, formula for the fixed point iteration method is just xi plus 1 equals to the g of xi. Okay, so meaning that at the first time, when i equal to 0, you will evaluate g of x0. So at the left hand side, you will get your x1. And then after that, for the next iteration, you will compute your g at the point x1, and then you will get the x2, so on and so forth. Okay, so the pattern would be xi plus 1 equals g xi. So you will stop when the difference between two consecutive x is less than, you know, some value, okay, is less than a given epsilon. So that's basically um, the brief idea of fixed point iteration method. Okay, so we are going to see um, example, okay, to illustrate um, the process of uh, calculating you know, or finding the roots using fixed point iteration method. Alright, consider this example. Show that the equation x cubed plus 3x minus 7 can be written in any one of the forms 1, 2, and 3. So basically, you just, you know, um, do the algebraic manipulation. Okay, start from this uh, expression here. Okay, rearrange the expression here and there okay, to come out with the form 1, 2, and 3 here. Okay, and then after that, determine which of this form would be suitable for the use of the simple iteration formula. Okay, so simple iteration formula is just another name for fixed point iteration method. Okay, so they are basically the same. Okay, use the starting value x0 equals 1.4. Find the root accurate to four decimal places and stop when the absolute of you know, the difference between two consecutive x is less than 0 0.0005, okay? So, I think the, the first part here, the algebraic manipulation here, okay, I just, okay, I'm just going to pass on that because I believe that okay, you can do on your own, okay, very easily. Okay, so now, let's focus on the second part here. Determine which of this form would be suitable. Okay, because we can see that this is in the form of x equals gx. Okay, this is also your gx and this is also your gx. Okay, so which of the gx here okay, is the correct one? Okay, it could be only one here or it could be two or it could be okay, uh, all of them. Okay, so now we are going to find out. All right, so... To determine um, the correct gx, so it, you should recall the convergence criteria just now, okay? So your gx, so for the first one here, so your gx is uh, 1 over 3, 7 minus x cubed, okay? So first, you need to get your g prime of x. So this is just simple uh, differentiation. So, you are going to have negative 3x squared over 3, okay, which can be simplified as negative x squared. So, what you need to do now, you need to evaluate at, you know, certain points, okay, which is given here in this problem, 
Okay, so you can use this starting value. So x not equals 1.4. Sometimes in the problem, you are given expression with the interval. So you also can use uh, the value of the interval. Okay, uh, either the left interval or the right interval or any points can be between the interval. But for this one, since x not is given, it is stated clearly here. So we can use this value here. Okay. So, it means that now you evaluate your g prime at the point x equals 1.4. Okay, so plug in. in okay, here you have, you know, negative 1.4 square. So, you should get negative 1.96. So, we can see that, you know, in terms of if you take the absolute value. So, g prime of 1.4, okay, is 1.96. So, this is basically greater than 1. Okay, so or in other um, uh, uh, notation, we can write as, you know, this one is not fulfill the convergence criteria which should be less or equals 1. Okay, so for the first one here, it is obviously out of the interval. Okay, so it means that this form is not suitable. Okay, it's not suitable to be used for the fixed point iteration method. So we are going to discard you know, the first form of GX here. Now let's look at um, the second GX. Okay, so your GX here is you know seven. So I'm going to put x squared plus three to be at the top, so it becomes negative one over there. So G prime of X is negative seven x square plus three you know you have negative two here and then multiply with the two x okay simple derivative okay so the same um, process you, you we evaluate g prime at the point 1.4 so use your calculator you will have negative 0 0.7967 somehow okay so this is also uh, 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 in terms of absolute value so you can see that this is positive okay but now you can see um, this is clearly less than one okay so it means you know your um, g prime here satisfy the convergence criteria so you can say that you know, this form is suitable. Okay, how about the third one? Okay, so here your gx is 7 minus 3x power of 1 third. So g prime of x is 1 over 3, 7 minus 3x power of negative 2 third times negative 3. Okay, and then g prime of 1.4, so plug in x equals 1.4 in your g prime expression, so you will have negative 0 0.5034. Okay, so the absolute of g prime here is again less than 1. Okay, so you can say that this form is also suitable. Okay, so two of them uh, satisfy the convergence criteria. Okay, so now let us proceed with the, you know, calculation, you know, fixed point iteration. So the formula would be x i plus one equals g x i. Okay, so now we are going to do for the second expression here. Okay, so consider this one. Okay, so now Take your g and put it at the right hand side here. Okay, put your g, not your g prime. Okay, put the expression of g. So it means that now you have xi plus 1 equals um, the expression is 7 over xi square plus 3. Now form the table. Okay, your table consists of column i for the iteration 
and then your value of x, okay, so you have xi, and then the difference between two consecutive x, okay, to check for the error, so xi minus xi minus 1, okay. So now, at the first row, when i equal to 0, we have x0. It is given in the problem as 1.4. Okay, so at the first row, we don't have the, you know, the difference between two consecutive x yet. Okay, and then when i equals 1, okay, we need to check, we need to find x1. Okay, so the, the manual calculation would be when i equal to 0, so you are basically... You know, referring to this, when i equal to 0, so you will have x1 at the left-hand side. So x1, and then at the right-hand side, you evaluate uh, the expression at the point x0. Okay, that is the manual calculation. And then you will replace your x0 with 1.4. Okay, but we are not going to do the manual calculation. We'll use the calculator, okay, and then just present our answer in the form of table. In the calculator, we are going to store this expression here. Okay, that expression, 7 over x squared plus 3. Okay, so we have the fraction, okay, 7 over x squared, so alpha x squared plus 3. Okay, okay so now uh, to get the x1 here, so we use this expression here, but we evaluate at the point x0. Okay, so press the calculate button. So your x that you want to use is 1.4. Okay, so convert to decimal. So x1 is 1, 1.4113. Okay, cut to 4 decimal. And then you can check, you know, the difference between, you know, uh, x1 and x0. Okay, x0. So you will have 0 0.0113. Okay, so that value is still greater than the given epsilon. So it means you need to proceed to the next iteration. Okay, so i equals 2. When i equals 2, it means on the right hand side of the calculation here, you need to evaluate at the point x1. Okay, based on this one. So uh, in your calculator, press the calculate button. So now your x that you want to use is 1.4113. So the, the value of x2 is 1.4023. So similarly, uh, you know, find the difference between x2 and x1. So 1.4023 minus 1.4113, and then you take the absolute value. That should be 0 0.009. Okay, so that value is still much, much more greater compared to the given epsilon. So you still need to proceed r equals 3. Okay, so in the calculator, calculate button. Okay, your x now is 1.4023. Okay, so this is 1.4095. And then the difference okay, between x3 and x2 in terms of absolute value is 0 0.0072. I hope you can get on your own. Okay, and uh, still greater than 0 0.0005, so it means you need to have i equals 4. Okay, so similarly, in the calculator, so now you will press for 1.4095. Okay, so 1.4037. Okay, and the error would be 0 0.0058. Okay, still uh, greater than epsilon, so it means you still need to proceed. Okay, so repeat the process okay, until your, you know, the difference between two consecutive x is less than the given epsilon. 
Okay, so for this example, you are supposed to get the answer up to you know, 16. R equals 16. So the value of x is 1.4061 and the error would be 0.0004. Okay, but uh, even though it is 16 number of iteration, but I'm sure you can do it very quickly with the calculator because basically you just you know press the calculate button okay, and then just change the value of x all right so um don't forget you know your last line would be to write down what is the final answer because our intention is basically to have you know the root of um, the function fx in the first place okay so write down therefore the roots that we wish to get, which denote by x star, is approximately the latest x that you have in the table, which is x16, that is 1.4061. Okay, so that is the solution when you use the second form here. Okay, so similarly, you do the same process okay, uh, with, you know, this form, x equals 7 minus 3x, one third. Okay, so for the second one, I hope you can, you know, proceed on your own for that one. Uh, that is xi plus 1 equals, you know, 7 minus 3xi, one third. Okay, have your table. Okay, I hope you can write nicely on your paper. You have i, x, i, and the difference between two consecutive x. And the first one, i equal to 0. So you will have 1.4. Okay, and then when i equals 1, okay, so you, what you need to do is you need to store this uh, equation now in the calculator. Okay, And then repeat the same process as here. You are supposed to have, so this one is up to 6. Eh? So later you can check your answer. 6, 2 with the error of 0 0.0003 somehow. Okay. So for that one, therefore x star is approximately x6 here which is 1.4062. Okay. It is basically, you know, almost the same as the, 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 the first one here, 1.4061, and this is 1.4062, okay? So this is an um, um, example of using the fixed point or um, also called a simple iterative formula, okay, simple iterative method to get the root of a nonlinear equation, okay? So I hope you are okay with that, you are clear with the explanation. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.